and you'll see that that void form now cuts both massings. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to first I'm going to zoom out and I want to create a tower in this back area for the design as well as push this face back and create a second story balcony area with an overhead canopy. So let's begin and create the tower. I'm going to come up to my level 4 pl floor plan. I'm going to use a circle. I'm going to click and drag so I have the radius that I would like for this. I'm going to deselect and actually I'm going to click on the circle and because I would like to move it I'm going to click and move it over where I would like it to appear. I'm going to come back to my 3D view and extrude this as well. It's already selected, so I'm just going to come right up here to create form, solid form. This gives me my Z grip again that I'm going to use and drag until my top level is associated. Now we have our tower on the back side of our building. Next I'm going to come to this front and I'm going to tab through until my front face is selected. If you see as I tab through, right now it's the entire massing now it is selecting that edge. Now it is selecting the object again. And I'll just continue to tab through and now I have my face selected. It's important to have the entire face selected to push and pull this entire plane. So I'm going to pull this plane back. If I had a dimension I could type it in to my temporary dimension string but we're just going to pull it back enough that it creates an outdoor space right now. Now let's draw our slab. I'm going to come back up to create, click on the model line, and this time I do want us to select to draw on the face. I'm going to zoom in on this face I'm going to begin to sketch the line work that I need for my overhead slab. Make sure that this line work is a closed loop. I'm going to escape out. Now I want to select this form. Come up here and we're going to create a form from this as well, a solid form. Right now this overhang is 8 feet. This time I am going to use my temporary dimensions. I'm going to create a 15 foot overhead slab. The last thing I want to do over here is begin to push and pull to create what will become curtain wall at a later point in our project. But I just want to show you that we can push and pull the edges of a conceptual mass as well. I'm going to select this edge. If this edge is not what is currently selected, you tab through to find it. And now I'm going to pull my grab, my green indicator. pull this face and just to balance it I'm going to select and pull my red face on this end and now I have the slanted walls that I'm looking for so now I'm going to go and create 
So now let's load this massing back into our project environment. First thing we need to do is I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And I'm going to come up here and I want to save my massing. Concept 1. And I'm just going to save it to my desktop here. Now I'm going to come up here and I'm going to actually open a new project. Remember, we're using our architectural template. Now, in my floor plan view of this project, we're going to load our new conceptual family. So I'm going to shift tab to go back to my current conceptual masking that I still have open. and you'll see this load into project button. I'm going to click that. Revit has enabled the show mass mode so the newly created mass will be visible. By default mass are, forms are not visible in the project environment of Revit. So what Revit is letting me know by this long message is that the mass will be visible actually going to turn that mode to show masses on. So now it's asking me to insert. How, you want to make sure that place on work plane is currently selected before you place this mass. And we're going to place this mass since we're in our level one floor plan. We're just going to click and insert it on the ground floor. Going to hit escape. It's a good practice to get used to selecting your elevation views. And dragging them beyond the extent of your conceptual massing. So that your elevation views are complete. 